Hi, my name is Adam. And uh, one of the things that I like to do is walk through neighborhoods, through the woods, through parks, and on mountains. I like to walk. So join me, and together we'll take a step to see the world. Greetings, citizens. My name is Adam, and I'm here again with another Walking with Adam in the Abandoned series. Like my trip to Piddock Mansion previously, I am again traveling in the same area, which is said to be haunted by the ghosts of the past. This time again in Forest Park in Portland. Yes, it has an interesting history behind where I'm going today. That is a long way up. Good call. Hi, how are ya? <laughs> Blind. My mask on. Yeah. Fogging up my own vision here. <laughs> That's a good one. Yep.
for this dude. Hmm, there's a dare for, <laughs> for somebody. <laughs> Want to try crossing on that? If you got the balance, you can actually get across. The water's running right over the path. That's cool. Oh. Oh, of you. Mm -hmm. They drive a stick, Aaron. They want a manual. Morning. Morning. Nice little creek bed, very nice.
like it is an actual path. Huh. Across on these logs. That's definitely an idea. Oh, hey, look at that. This is what we came to look for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In 1850, Danford Bolch filed a land claim on this portion of land near what was then the fledgling settlement of Portland. Danford's land was large enough that he needed help in order to clear it. He hired a transient worker named Mortimer Stump, who was from Vancouver. Bolch allowed him to stay with he and his family, which consisted of his wife, Mary Jane, and his nine children. Mortimer was with the family so long that... One thing led to another, and he fell in love with the Danford's fifteen-year-old daughter, Anna. Mortimer asked for permission to marry Anna, but her parents refused. The couple threatened to elope, and Danford exclaimed that if they did, he would kill Mortimer. Well, <laughs> young lovers did not heed his warning, and Mortimer ran off to Vancouver with Anna in November of 1858, where they were married. This sparked a feud between the Bolch and the Stump families. A few weeks later, Mortimer, Anna, and some other members of the Stump family returned to Portland for some supplies and encountered Danford. Having been nagged and tormented by Mary Jane to make good on his promise, Danford later claimed that his wife bewitched him into carrying out his threat to kill Mortimer and return their daughter to the family. In a drunken stupor, Danford pulled forth a double-barreled shotgun which wouldn't be invented for another sixteen years and shot Mortimer in the head. <laughs> Bulch was promptly arrested. There's a full bottle of Snapple right there. That's interesting. However, the deteriorated condition of the wooden prison allowed him to his later escape while awaiting his trial. He hid out on his own property like a moron and was again found and arrested some six months later. Danford Bolch was put on trial and convicted for the murder of Mortimer and was hung to death on October 17, 1859. This was the first legal hang that occurred in the newly formed Oregon Territory. Mary Jane continued to live at the Bolch cabin, but at Danford's request, divided up the land amongst her children. Over the years, the land was passed to various owners, but was of little use, and was eventually given to the city of Portland by Donald McClay. In, uh, what, 1897, I think? 
to be used as a park. And it still is. It's beautiful, beautiful area. In the 1950s, a stone structure was built to house restrooms and a ranger station for the park near the site of the old Balch cabin. Over time, this structure deteriorated from vandalism and was abandoned in the 1960s. This has since become known as the Witch's Castle. It is rumored that this was once a 1600s trading post, but that's not true at all. The existing structure was built almost 350 years after that. Whether a previous structure was there or not, who knows. It didn't have plumbing, that's for sure. It is said that strange occurrences happen in this area. Plasma orbs have been photographed in some cases. Some say that when you visit this area around midnight, which is two hours after it closes, many apparitions can be seen in the area and appear as if they were in some sort of battle or war against each other. It is believed that these may be the ghosts of Danford, Mortimer, Anna, and Mary Jane returning from the hereafter. Perhaps these are indeed the spirits of the Bolch and Stump families carrying out their ghostly feud through all of time. Actually, it's just bathrooms. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, there's no ghosts here. Probably. If there are ghosts here, they are probably coming from the Piddock Mansion not too far up the trail from here. Yes, the Piddock Mansion is said to be haunted by the owners, or the builders. And that could be. It could be. It's a big area. And here we are. The Witch's Castle. As you can see, the roof did cave in. That is a stone structure. And I came here very, very early in the morning, hoping to not run into people, and, well, it looks like I was wrong about that. Some other people had the same idea I did. But it is a lovely walk, it is a lovely area, and I'm happy I came. <laughs>